Welcome guys, it's David here from ProTuts HD and today I'm introducing a new series on the channel called PC Build of the Month. In this series I won't be building any PCs, although I'll show you the parts of each PC build and explain my reasoning for each part I choose for each build. Feel free to use these parts in your own PC build. Anyways, this build goes for around 500 bucks and I'll leave a PC list link in the description. So without further delay, here are the parts. So for the CPU, I want the Intel Core i5-6500. The i5-6500 is not a bad option for those who do moderate gaming and some lightweight editing. Now this 4-core bad boy has a base clock of 3.2 GHz and a turbo frequency of about 3.6 GHz. This CPU is no slacker when it comes to seeing core performance compared to an old AMD CPU. So since this isn't a K-series CPU, overclocking is not in the conversation. With its low power consumption at a TDP of 65 watts, this CPU is worth the money spent. The motherboard is the Ace Rock H110-DGS in this build, which is not much to talk about. No, this motherboard is not packed with a lot of features, but the price speaks for, for what it offers. 32 gigabytes of maximum support and memory, USB 3.0 headers, micro ATX form factor, and two usable slots for DDR4 memory up to 2133 megahertz. Though this board does not have SLI support, of course, the amount of money this board goes for in the four SATA ports compromises. RAM in this build isn't anything special, but it's key in the build. We decided to go with one 8 gig stick of G-Skill Aegis memory. The speed is 2133 megahertz. Now the eight gigabytes of RAM is enough for anyone who is gaming or just doing some lightweight editing and more than enough for browsing the web or even checking your email. The storage holding the operating system is a 120 gigabyte SanDisk Plus SSD. A SSD is highly preferred and recommended than using a regular hard drive because it's ability to boot the OS faster than a mechanical hard drive. Although SSDs are a lot quieter and make little to no noise, than a standard mechanical drive. Since we are talking about hard drives now, I didn't put one in this build because that can be replaced with an SSD since they cost the same amount and you can save up later and buy one or use to use a old 500 gigabyte, one terabyte drive that has SATA connection. The Zotac NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1050 is an amazing card for the price. Therefore, I mainly chose it. This is the two gigabyte model of the card. Now. The two gigabytes of video memory is enough for entry level gaming. Now the 1050 will most definitely give you decent and respectable frame rates in various AAA titles. With a higher core, the boost clock gives it an edge over the AMD RX 460. Now this card does perform better than the RX 460 in most games. Overall, the 1050 is a solid choice for many new and entry level gamers that are looking for an enjoyable experience in gaming. When searching for power supply, I decided to search for an item that could get the job done. That's when the EVGA 450 watt power supply appeared. Unfortunately, this is not a modular power supply, but for 35 to 40 bucks, you really can't go wrong in any way possible. The case holding all these precious parts is the Rosewell SRM-01 Micro ATX Mini Tower. This case contains two three and a half inch drive bays and one five and a quarter inch drive bay. With a built-in fan, this case is worth the 25 bucks, period. Remember, each part is in the description below linked to the cheapest website that has them available. Overall, this build works for anyone, whether you're just getting into gaming or just want a decent PC that will last you a couple of years before needing to upgrade. I fully recommend this PC to anyone, feel free to comment or use this build as all these parts are compatible with each other. Really, I am a PC enthusiast. Anyways, if you really liked the video, please leave a like and subscribe. This was ProTuts HD and I'm signing out.